Hi, I'm Alexia from The Real Housewives of Miami, and I'm on Hollywood Raw talking about my life, how it feels to be back on the show after an eight-year hiatus in All About Miami. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page. Make sure you drop a comment, like, subscribe. Do all the fun things. Follow. Follow everything. We're here to entertain you guys. What are you waiting for? Hurry up. Let's go. Enjoy. So, first off, thank you for coming on the podcast. You are in Miami. How, uh, where in Miami exactly are you? I know there's Brickell, there's South Beach, there's North Miami Beach. Right. Where in Miami? Where in Miami are you? So, right now, I'm in Sunny Isles. This is like where I live. Sunny Isles is like Collins Avenue. So, it's like Miami Beach, north. And sure. it's a, a little community here. It's called Sunny Isles. Sunny so Isles I, is I'm not a Miami, I'm not a Miami person. If you could equate that to somewhere in Los Angeles, is this like, Beverly Hills? Is it Brentwood? Is it Malibu? Like, what would you uh, equate it to? That's a good question. And I know LA. Johnny, let me ask my friend Johnny. Johnny, that's what would question. you equate Sunny Isles to, to like LA. LA? What neighborhood in LA that you know LA also well? Do you think there's like a anything what, what? that what would like Sunny Isles equate to like in LA? Like what neighborhood? Beverly Hills or Brentwood or... The hills. Like a Beverly Hills, yeah. I didn't want to say that, but yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, should I say that or not? Yeah, it's kind of like a Beverly Hills, but like I know Beverly Hills, there's apartments, but there's also like a lot of homes. So in the Sunny Isles area, it's really like a lot of high rises on the beach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So actually, okay. Sunny Isles, and I could be wrong, you, you would know better than I do. Was that where the condos collapsed? So that's where my business is. So I have a business in Surfside. It's also like part of Miami Beach, but there's like a little section called Surfside, which that was that unfortunate um, incident of the, um, of the building, you know, collapsing. And that's also on Collins, but it's between 87th and 97th, and 97th pretty much. It's 10 blocks. It's called Surfside. Gotcha. So if you continue to go up north, you hit... Um, Sunny Isles, which is 185th and Collins. That's like where I live. Gotcha. Okay. And so what, but it's what, all like on the east. It's all like the beach area. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what, Miami's been like. Level. Yeah. So what's it been like out there for the last two years during the pandemic? I mean, obviously you live in an amazing spot, but like, what's it been like? Because California has been, I think, very different from Florida. Oh, a hundred percent. And I feel like that's why everybody wants to be here in Florida. Because we're, you know, we've been open, you know, for pretty much forever. I mean, it's kind of like COVID never happened here, but it did. Obviously, it's a, it was very present, especially in my life. So, you know, I don't want to say that, but I feel like from the beginning, you know, our governor always supported, you know, the fact of like, you know, opening things and just like a lot more supportive of like the businesses and of just like going on with life. So, I mean, the last two years, we have obviously seen so much influence from everyone all over the world coming to Miami, wanting to buy homes here, moving over here. And, you know, just because it was a really scary experience and, you know, that a lot of people had, you know, where they were kind of like trapped in their homes and in apartments and, you know, in cities that were, were closed, you know, for such a long time. And they felt like here they were going to have, you know, more freedom and just the weather that we have here just, I think, is, you know, also a big factor why people want to live here. Yeah. How, you know, Miami's got some of the best restaurants around. Is it, How hard is it for you to get a reservation at like Carbone, which is like the new hot spot? Can you get a reservation <laughs> at eat? Well, um, for me, it's, it's easier because obviously I'm like from Miami, <laughs> so I have my contacts and, and all that good stuff. But, you know, I love for Miami to have, like, all these amazing restaurants and, you know, the major food gr group coming here to right. Miami and opening up all these wonderful restaurants. I'm a foodie. We go out to dinner every single night, Todd and I, and we love to try, you know, all the new restaurants. And we love to have, like, all the hot spots here in Miami. And I feel like Miami has really become, you know, one of the cities in the U.S. with great dining. And with, you know, all these incredible restaurants that, uh, you know, other states have had, like New York and California. Well, yeah, Miami is, is on another level. It's insane. Like, Dax, I, I spent some time in Miami the last two years. And, like, you know, going out to the restaurants, especially near, you know, where, like, uh, Ocean Prime, there's the Carbone is right there. And, like, 
you bounce around these restaurants and just the crowd, the audience, the women, the the energy, it's it's insane. The money, the cars that you see coming up to the valet. It's like, what is going on? What Miami, how does it, how does I don't even Miami know myself, go? right? It's like I feel like Miami's always been like a very attractive city. You know, it's always because of the weather and the women and caliente, the women here were like half naked because of, we like to say because of the weather. And, you know, so it's it's always been like a fun city that of a lot of people have talked about because it's very unique, you know. And I think even more during the pandemic, you know, you really see that, you know, you walk out and like everybody's speaking a different language. You know, everybody looks different. Everybody's either. It's a very transient city. You know, I feel like a lot of people do live here, you know, full time. And there's a lot of people that just have second and third and fourth homes, you know, and just come here to have fun or for the weekend or, you know, to get away. Absolutely. By the way, is Carbone good? Because I, Adam, you've been there, obviously. Bo it is. You have been there. I is love it. Is it worth the hype? I feel it is. You know, I, I love what they did with that space. It used to be Upland. I think you guys have one in California. Yeah. Um, so it used to be Upland, and I liked it when it was Upland as well. But, you know, I felt that they created a beautiful space in there. They obviously have the name already, so it attracts a lot of people to begin with already because of their name. And it's just like the scene. I think when Carbone opened in Miami, they opened up at the right time. And like, all the New Yorkers were coming, you know, and just like there. And you can see it. You know, I loved it because it was more like New York people than Miami people. And I love the people from New York, too. So it was like you would walk in there and I actually felt like I was in New York City. So I thought it was like super cool. It was like in the wintertime, everybody was dressed, you know, more conservative. It was more like in New York. I feel like the food is absolutely delicious. I mean, I love the spicy rigatoni, the lobster ravioli, the chicken parmesan, the carrot cake for dessert. Like, I'm a foodie, so, like, I love it. And yeah. I love all the other restaurants they opened. They've opened up Zizi's, which is a sushi restaurant, Japanese, like, amazing. And um, Ha Salon, which is Israeli. I mean, they just came at the right time with a lot of money into a beautiful city that likes to party, that likes to eat. And, you know, it's been a win for them. Yeah. Do you have a membership to Soho House? I used to have a membership to Soho House. And I love Soho. I still, a lot of my friends are members. So I, I go with them. Yeah. It's just not worth being a member anymore. It's just like. It's, you know why, what? Just... I mean, the thing is like Soho, like since I live on the beach, like you guys aren't looking, but I go downstairs, my building like has everything. I have a restaurant in my building, you know, I have a great gym. I go down and I have like beach chairs, you know, private and pool. We got everything here. So Soho was good at one point in my life when like I had a home, I really didn't, I lived in Miami beach, but not like that I would go downstairs and have the chairs here. So it's more like, you know, younger also, like I know my son, Peter loves to go and like all like my younger friends. And when I do want to go, I can get in. So it's not like I really need a membership. <laughs> You're like, why pay for a membership when <laughs> right. I can get in? So yeah. And then Chaconis too. They have a great restaurant, which is Chaconis. Sure. And that's open to everyone. So, yeah, we have great, great spots here, just like you guys do. You guys are in L.A. or New York? I'm in, I'm or both? in New York. He's, he's in California. Actually, I wanted to ask you, when was the last oh, time you went? Oh, my two favorite cities, exactly. New York and, and L.A., besides Miami. That's it. It's yeah. like the Miami, L.A., New York connection. <laughs> We're covering our corners here of the country. Yes. When, when was the last time you went to 11. 11 is this 24-hour... I, I know 11. Yes. yes. Yeah. I was like, wait, I thought you were going to finish the yeah. sentence. 11 something. Ooh, What's the, Johnny, uh, when was the last time my friend Johnny's here? I think the last time I went to, oh, actually, who was it with? I think the last time I went to 11 was with Todd and with Nini Leakes. Nini was like visiting Miami and, you know, she wanted to experience it all. So we ended up at 11. You know, 11 is the kind of place that you end up at the end of the night or not even so at the end of the night because they're open at any time. Yeah. So you can really get there at whatever time. But I feel like, you know, People maybe like my age group, I'm like so done like with the clubs and stuff like that. I feel like the clubs is more like, you know, in their 20s and like even teenagers are going to clubs nowadays. And it was never like my scene. But sometimes like after a restaurant, you're having dinner and drinks or whatever. So where do you go at one o'clock in the morning if you don't want to go home? You go to 11. And it's kind of, and it's it's a fun place. I mean, it's like a club, all ages. And there's like so much going on. You know, it's whatever you want it to be. Yeah, when was the last time you went? Did you guys go when you came to Miami? I, I didn't go this last trip, but I've been before and I've gone with uh, some good people and it's definitely an experience. You know, it's it's a lot of energy. It doesn't end. 
and there's just a lot going on there like it's a strip club but it's not really a strip club like you, you exactly know, no one... like that's what i say it's like it's they're not in your face you know like yeah. they are in your face if you want them to be in your face yeah I, I feel like you it's like it's a really cool experience i think that everybody that comes to miami any ages should like experience it i remember i had like a i was single for like a year and a half and i used to love going there it was like so much fun and um, and I remember like the door guy, which I already knew by all the times that I was going was like, OK, I, you need to go home. Like, I'm not letting you in here tonight <laughs> because like I liked it so much just because it was like so cool. And like the food there is great, too. Yeah. I mean, that's what they say about all the strip clubs that the food yeah. there, the food there is good. But yeah. So that's awesome. No, I, I, I love Miami. I don't get down there enough. So unfortunately, that is my problem is that I, I don't get to it, you know, check out these cool places. But, you know, here's the thing. We have a lot of Real Housewives on our show. And one of my favorite parts of our podcast is finding out how the hell they got on the show. What was the process? It was it someone else that recommended it. How did you wind up on Real Housewives of Miami? Okay, so as many years ago, you know, our show was casted in, in 2009 or 2010 was our first season. And, you know, just like all the other cities, you know, I feel like it's become it's such a big part of like our pop culture and uh, like our daily lives that everybody knows about the housewives. So when they started talking about it in Miami, it's something that I never thought that I would do. And um, a lot of my friends were trying out for the show. And I never really gave it much thought because I had seen very little of it. I didn't really know what the show was about. And I remember just seeing New Jersey. I was in Orlando with my kids and a few moms. And we're all getting ready to have dinner. And it was the New Jersey scene with Teresa flipping the table. <laughs> and we were like, oh, my God, what is this? Like, imagine that was like my first show that I ever saw. And then we're like, you know what, kids, like, you know, why don't we just order room service? Because, like, we're watching something really good on TV and they didn't even ask what it was. So we literally ordered room service and watched all of this. Well, as we were watching and at the end, all my friends were like, oh, my God, if a show ever comes to Miami, you need to be on this. And I'm like, fuck all of you. I'm like, you really think I'm like for that? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, oh, no. So anyways, a few months later, you know, they wanted to add, you know, the idea of adding Miami to the franchise, you know, came about. They started casting here. And um, the one that told me about it was my son, Peter, because he was modeling at the time. He belonged to the green agency and they were actually casting these women. He's like, Mom, like I saw your friends like at the agency. And I'm like, what are my friends doing at the agency? They're like a little bit too old for that. And they're like, no, they're casting for the show and blah, blah, blah. And he says it's called the Miami Housewives. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you know what? I don't think it's going to be me. It's not going to be your mom that's going to do that. But, you know, so it kind of like caught my attention. Fast forward, they continue to cast. You would think Miami would be a really easy city to cast. It wasn't. So fast forward, like a year later, they still don't have the cast. And it was kind of like the final cast. And um, one of the casting directors that I had met through Peter started reaching out to me and saying, listen, this is like the last call kind of thing. If you don't show up tomorrow, like it's done, where you need to make a final selection. And I still wasn't going to do it. But my one of my best friends called me and she said, I need you to accompany me tomorrow to like a casting. And I said, oh, God, I think is it the housewives? She's like, yeah. And I was like, no, like, believe me, I don't want to do that. She's like, no, no, like, it's not for you. It's for me. I'm a doctor. I'm a dentist. They, they're looking for a professional, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I'm not exactly a dummy. Like, I may not be a doctor, but. If I go with you and they see me, they know who I am. They're going to they're gonna want to sit me down and ask me some questions. She's like, oh, that's fine, whatever. Anyways, I went. I put on my outfit. I remember it was a little cool outside. I put on my Versace boots, like these skinny black pants, a silver Cavalli jacket. And I walked in with her and they were like, Peter's mom. And I was like, yeah, Peter's mom is here to accompany my best friend. She sat down first and she like literally had like an appointment to meet with them. And after her was me. And I remember her telling me, like, don't use your hands, like sit on top of your hands, like, you know, and I was like, Loretta, like that's her name. She knows it. Um, she, I'm like, I'm going to be who I am. This is how I am. I talk with my hands. So I actually sat there and I said everything I had to say, how raw and authentic and like real I am. I said, my husband doesn't know I'm here. Um, I just thought it would be fun. Like you guys keep on bugging me. So I'm here. I just said it raw, everything as it was. 10 minutes later, I'm having lunch with my friend. I get the phone call saying, you know, you need to tell your husband and your family because we want to meet your family and we want to see where you live. So the next day, that's what happened. 
He showed up at my house. They met my kids. They met my husband, which did not want me to do it at all. <laughs> and um, he kind of like almost threw them out of the house. And he's like, my wife is not doing this. My wife is not doing this. And then two months later, I got the phone call that I had been selected and we started filming. But how and important is here the house to the producers? I, I, I feel like that's what, when they say we want to see your husband and your kids. Well, they really want to see the house, right? Because they want to know what the filming is going to be like. The bigger the house, the better for TV. Well, I remember that they came to me after Larsa Pippen's house. I'll never forget that. So they're like, they were late. And, you know, and, you know, my husband at the time had told me, you know, you better make sure they're out by the time I get home. I don't want to see those people, this and that. So I was like dying. I was like, oh, my God, when are you guys coming? So finally, they show up at my house and they're like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, we're late. You know, we came from Larsa Pippen's house. And I'm like, God, I was friends with Larsa and I knew what a spectacular big house she had. So next to her house, my house looked like a shack. <laughs> so when they come to my house, it was kind of like you have to do an introduction, you know, with the cameras. They're like, it's kind of like an MTV crib kind of thing. Like, welcome to my crib. So I was like, OK, welcome to my shack, because I know you just came from Larsa Pippen's house. And it's like a little house, but like, I love it. And, you know, I just, you know, I kind of like introduced my house and, you know, it was a smaller house, but it was on the water. It had spectacular views. You know, I did it with so much love and good taste because, you know, I love um, design and decoration. So it was actually maybe one of the smallest houses, but the ones that they loved the most. It was like very homey. It was very like they, everybody felt really nice when they were there. So we did that. They met my family. They met Herman when they got there. And two months later, I got the phone call and, you know, and eight years later, I'm here. Well, I don't, I don't want to put any pressure on you, but Larsa Pippen was our biggest episode ever. And you're following that. Oh, yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure at all. Well, I love Larsa. No, and I I'm think just she's amazing. And I'm so happy that, you know, that you got to see a different side of Larsa. And, um, you know, I think she's extraordinary and I'm very happy to be that she's back, you know, in the group and, you know, back for season four. Yeah. And we have a really great cast. She, she's awesome. We had such a good time with her. I mean, just the stories we talked about. She is a wealth of knowledge and so down to earth. And that was a really good chat. So you say hi to our girl for us. OK, if you see. Yes, you see absolutely. <laughs> did you know all the girls before you kind of went on the show together or did you guys well maybe some of them you knew some of them you were aware of or some of them did you meet on camera for the first time in season one yeah I feel like even though we know of each other you know because Miami is you know a small town I like, I like to say well now it's grown into a big city you know every day it grows more but you know I feel like we all knew each other like in season one I knew Leah I knew Marisol um Leah kind of brought Adriana in I really didn't know Adriana I knew Larsa I became you know friendlier with Larsa who were the other girls? I knew Christy. And that's it. I think it was only like us. And then in season two, you know, you know, they're always bringing new girls that you kind of like know about or you know them socially or you've seen them, but you're not very, very close to. But, um, you know, this season, you know, we're all friendly. Lisa, Larsa, Marisol and I, Adriana, you know, we've been friends already for a long time. Can I, can I ask you a question? When you started the show, did you have a, a strategy in mind in regards to how you wanted to portray yourself? I mean, everyone says, you know, I wanted to come across real and authentic, but sometimes you have to overdo that to be entertaining for television. Did you go right. in with anything? No, I came in not knowing anything at all. I think if I would have known all this, I would, maybe I wouldn't be here today. No, you know, I never really like strategize with anything or it's not like, oh, I have a plan or like, it's kind of like I got into this without even knowing really. And I think me and I can speak for some of the other girls too, that we got into this just like not knowing what to expect, you know, not knowing, you know, what this was going to take us, not knowing, like I was just me, like this is like who I am. And I think this season you've seen like a more open Alexia, you know, just because, you know, I'm older, I'm unapologetic now, like so much has happened in my life. You know, maybe as before I was a little bit more shy, it was more because of my circumstances in my life, I didn't feel that open, you know, things that I was ashamed about before I'm actually proud about today. So it's just like, you know, I've evolved, you know, I mean, this was the first time we were on TV was um, 11 years ago. So, yeah. you know, not only was I younger, but it was a, a different stage in my life. Did you, did the producers, I, I got to ask this question because oh, people always wonder this. Do you think the producers ever kind of were trying to mold you a certain way or tried to make you kind of go a certain angle with your role in the show 
or during filming? No, and my, I can speak, you know, I can only speak for myself, but no, absolutely not. I think that they really sign you on because of your casting and who you are and like, you know, they see the things they like about you. And um, it's just really playing yourself. I mean, like this isn't like, you know, an actress, you know, that learns a role and um, and they kind of like, that's what you're doing. But this is like who you are. Like this is, you know, sometimes that's why I have a problem that goes like, oh, it's like how they edit it or they did this or they did that. I'm like, no, this is like really how you are. You know what I mean? Yes, I mean, you don't get to see the whole picture sometimes, you know, cause you know, it's a, it's a short episode or it's like a short scene. But, you know, I feel that the women on these shows are really like who they are. I mean, I can only yeah. speak for myself. Like, I don't know if they make anybody else or, you know, but if that's the case, they're on the wrong show then. Because, you know, this is like a reality show. It's really about who you are and like your life and the way you are. I don't think you could really prepare for this, you know, like as you can prepare, you know, for a role like for a movie that's scripted. You know, this isn't scripted. This is kind of like your real life and who you are. Do you, well, you, do you ever have, have sorry, sorry, I was going to say, do you, do you ever have like chats with the producers about like, hey, I've got some really important news in my life or things I want to share. Like, can we make this a situation? Because I and I go back to like maybe like the, the story with your, your father. Is that something that gets brought up before or that's a. Oh, no, that wasn't. That no, comes out. What? That's a good question. So, no, that just came out. They were all surprised. So the story you know, was they were you, all surprised. you came out and I remember you were at the table and you had it, you kind of dropped a bombshell. It was that your, your father was bisexual. You found that your father was bisexual after he passed, right? Um, which was, you know, it was a pretty, which is kind of like the same story as Herman. So like, but that I guess came about because, you know, I, yeah. right. I was like sitting there, you know, I was like, you know, being recognized and given an award, you know, for, you know, Winwood Pride, you know, and it's something that I've always like had in, in me, you know what I mean? I've always been an advocate and like secretly kind of like always had this like love and support, you know, for the organization. So like all these things and like it made me think about my dad, you know what I mean? And like, oh my God, if my dad could be seen that I'm like doing this and how like proud I am, like it, it made me think of my dad. So obviously the producers didn't know about it. Marisol, that's my best friend, didn't know about it. None of the ladies knew about it. So it was just something, you know, that happened like within me, you know, I guess I was ready to like let it out. And it happened to be, you know, with the ladies and, and then the dining room table. That's like how it happened. So interesting. It's a wild, it's a wild story. Yeah. You found out your father was bisexual after he passed and uh, you found that your ex-husband was also bisexual after they, after he passed. How did that, how does that affect you as a person today? You know, it, it really or does it not right so i feel like it's helped me in a good way like you know like some people yeah, i've spoken to some people and they're like you know sometimes people like you go the other way and have like anger and kind of like you know against that you know and are against that and don't support it and they feel like hurt and shameful but you're not so i took the other direction which is kind of like how i live my life on the contrary like I love, you know, everybody and I love the organization and I support it. And I feel that, you know, if I can do anything, you know, to help it, like, I don't think like any man should have to live how my father and Herman lived their life because it was a taboo and it was like something that, you know, was looked down upon and, and that's what it was like, and that's how I feel. So on the contrary, I've taken that and I've gone the other direction of like, there's, I think back about my dad and I think back about Herman. I'm like, why, you know, why couldn't they just like come out Be themselves, and yeah. say, yeah. And just, it didn't it, like, there were extraordinary men, you know, they did so much for their families, for the community. They were both professionals, but yet, you know, they had to live a lie, you know, a lie within themselves because they were afraid that, you know, that people were going to judge them and they weren't going to have the same respect. And especially like in the Latin community, you know, I can only speak for that. You know, I feel like it's still a taboo. I feel like it's like double standards. It's like they say one thing and they do the other. And, you know, people don't, there's still a lot of people who are not tolerant for that. And a lot of like young kids that are still struggling with that and are afraid to come out because they're not going to have the support that they need from their family. Yeah, there's a Did lot of fear out there. I remember after you, you know, you came forward, uh, Leah Black was came out saying she was offended thinking that you outed your ex-husband as uh before he 
before he was passed, well, after he passed, so he right. didn't have a chance to defend himself. What was your thought on? Like, well, but first of all, why would he have to defend himself? What you're offending, you're defending yourself. Well, first of all, I don't really care what Leah Black thinks because she's the first one that talks behind people's back. And I'm sure she was one of the first ones that was already spreading rumors about, you know, Herman being gay, I mean, being his beard. So I don't believe anything she says. And um, that's why she's like no longer on the show because she's not that kind of woman. So she's, that's what she does. And she chooses to see the negative in it and she chooses to see it the wrong way because I'm sharing my story. Like, this is my story. I was affected by this because this is with somebody that I was married to. I loved for many years and, and still, you know, today, like it didn't matter whether he would have been alive because I would have felt exactly the same way. But me sharing my story, first of all, this is a story that a lot of people already knew, you know, maybe not nationally or globally now because we're streaming, but this is a story that a lot of people in our community here in Miami were aware of. So the fact that you know, I clear it up and that I, you know, a lot of people were already thinking that I was, you know, that I knew I've heard different versions of the story, but the only one that really knows the real story is me and I wanted to share it. So I, why not? You know, like this happens every day. I'm not the only woman that this happens to. I'm not trying to play the victim card. I wasn't trying to expose them. On the contrary, I wanted to know that, and I'm happy that he got to do what he wanted to do in his life. Because apparently this is something that he always wanted to do. He probably thought he was going to be hurting me or hurting his family or letting people down. And it wasn't about that. So, yeah, no, it seems like you have a very healthy outlook uh, on all of this because, you know, there is there is a lot of judgment, especially, you know, around that topic. And when you're in the spotlight, so I can understand that that's not the easiest thing to to go through. But you know, what I want to know is how, how did you well, and, and sorry. And another thing was that this was addressed in season three. I don't know if you remember, like Joanna mentioned something like that. I mean, it was really never like on the scene. you like that. We all got to talk about it, but it was kind of like behind my back. Mm. So so, you know, all these years later, you know, why can't I talk about my life and about my story? Like, you know, like, who is she? And I don't care what her opinion is or any anybody else's opinion. You know, this is something that. <clears throat> that happened to me and that I wanted to share and it came from a good place, you know, and from love and, and with good intentions. And, and I think that that's how everybody should see it. And I think that that's how the viewers saw it because I had a very loving relationship with Herman to begin with. So it's not like, you know, it's like the bitter ex-wife, you know, trying to like talk shit about her husband. Look, that was not the case at all. And I think that America understood that. Yeah. You know, I'm a very happy person. I moved on with my life. You know, I wanted closure, you know, from my life. And um, and the best thing that happened was that I was able to have this conversation, you know, with this man, with his lover that, you know, explains a lot of things to me, that told me a lot of things I needed to hear in order for me, you know, to have that closure. And no, it didn't change my opinion, you know, finding that about Herman at all. You know, I still had the same respect for him, same admiration. You know, I just feel bad that, you know, he wasn't, you know, he couldn't live that more and that he couldn't, you know, be here with us today and to continue to live the life that, you know, he would have wanted to live. No, I think you being able to speak your truth is is the best thing out there, the best thing possible. You know, you mentioned moving forward and moving on. How did you meet your husband, Todd? Oh, I met him at another great place here in Miami that I sp speak about. Um, sea Spice. It's on the river. Okay. I don't know if you guys have made it. So it's yeah. Sea Spice and Kiki's. It's like on the river. It's a new area in Miami. It's like Miami, like really Miami. And um, they were kind of like the pioneers in the river. And they opened up like this great, it's a restaurant. It's really a restaurant. It's not a, a club. It's like a restaurant, maybe lounge. And on Sundays, they have like, they. I feel like they were the ones that started the Sunday fun day here in Miami. And that's where you met on a Sunday, having fun at Sea Spice. What was he? Was he at a ta did he have a table and invite you over to his table? Like what's his line? How's he Ah, oh, <laughs> that's a, you know Miami, right? You come to a lot to Miami because you know how we roll here. No, yeah. actually, no. I was like standing around and walking around and I kind of like saw him walking by and I'm like, oh my God, that Italiano is so cute. I thought he was like Italian from Italy. I'm like, oh my God, I need to meet him before he goes back to Italy. And I actually <laughs> thought he was Italian. I didn't think he was from Miami. And um 
So we like kind of looked at each other. Then I didn't see him anymore. Then I saw him again, like on another Sunday. And I was with my friend Johnny that's here. And um, and we were there and he was ordering a coffee. And I was just kind of like tired. And I just like sat next to him without even knowing that it was like that guy that I thought was so cute. And I just like sat down and we started talking, him and his friends. And um, and he was like, he told his friends, wow, like, what was that? Like, he says, I talked about my mom. I always talk about my mom, about my kids. He was like, OK, this is like she's not from Miami because she's like not normal. Because, you know, in Miami, did we talk about the, apparently the ladies talk about other things. But anyways, we kept on seeing each mm -hmm. other. And then he asked me for my number. I gave him my business card. And he was like, okay, I'm not having it. But she gave me her business card. And then finally one day we were at the Forge. Do you know the Forge? The Forge is an iconic forge. place here in Miami. Unfortunately, they're not open anymore, but they were here for many, many years. It was like an institution in the Miami Beach, a restaurant, and they also had like a bar. I see him there again, and he's like, are you going to give me your number now? And I said, oh, I don't know. I still took out my card. He got my phone number, and he's like, put your phone number in here right now. So I did. And then I remember I was having a venue party. Remember I had the magazine, the venue magazine. I invited him to the party. He was leaving to Vegas on a real estate convention. When he came back, he called me. We went on a date and that's how we met. And that's how we, you know, continue to date until now. But it's that. weird, right? Cause like two people like that don't really meet like at a place like that, you know? Yeah, so no, yeah. we are fortunate. Yeah. And what's his thoughts on being a part of the show? Does he enjoy it? Is he kind of hmm. stand off like don't love the cameras? Like that, that's what right. I think. Well, I think he's someone... a natural. I think Todd is very natural with the camera. I think he's great. He speaks amazing. He's like super smart and he's very comfortable with the camera. But what happens is like, you know, they really didn't sign up to do the show. You know, like when he met me, I had already been on the show. I'd had three seasons. Actually, no, we started dating. We were in New York. It's a funny story. And um, I was there with my kids and he was there with his with his kids, too. And um, and we coincided. We go out to dinner and we go for drinks. And the entire time this was three years later. This was in 2016. The last time our show was on was in 2013. And um, and we still had fans like coming up to me. Can I take a picture? You know, and, and how's Peter? How's Frankie? Oh, my God. How's Frankie talking about my life? And Todd's like, um, who are you? How do all these people know about your life? <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm in this show called The Houses of Miami. And then he told his mom and his mom's like, oh, my God, yes, Alexia. Of course, I know Alexia. So like for him, it was kind of like he knew about it. So but he had never watched until, of course, you know, eight years later, which we kind of never I always believed that it would come back. But, you know, a lot of people forgot about us and thought we would never come back. We got the phone call again. And then, of course, you know, I had to ask him if he was OK with it. But again, he had never watched. So he didn't really know what he was getting himself into. And the truth is, like, they don't sign up for it. You know, he didn't sign up for it. My son, Peter, didn't sign up for it. Frankie didn't sign up for it. It's kind of like, you know, my kids were young when I, you know, did this the first time. So it's not like they really had a say. And, um, you know, they thought it was fun for their mom to be on TV and for them to be on TV and all that. But. You know, at the end of the day, sometimes, you know, it's not so much fun for them. You know, we I watch Housewives and, you know, obviously part of the show is showing off their, their lavish lifestyle. You know, a lot of women like to see not just you guys, but other seasons, other franchises. They like to see how these people live. They like to envision it. You know, some people in middle America like to kind of set themselves up similar to a lifestyle like you guys have in Miami or New York or Beverly Hills or OC. How many... Just out of curiosity, how many homes do you own? We own none because no, Todd doesn't right. believe in owning. We rent, we rent here. Okay. Really? So, I, yeah, he I'm believes in commercial real that. estate. And you know what? He got me to believe that as well. So because many, you guys own buildings then? and other Yes. <laughs> yeah, with many doors. You know, we don't believe in just owning one door to our home. It's like we own many doors. So, um, yeah, he's in commercial real estate, so um, he's and he's very smart. So I, I know that that's really like how he believes and how he feels. So and besides that, we love like trying like different like high rises, different apartments. Like we don't want to know that we have to like stay here. So we've been in this building for almost four years and we love it here. But, you know, next year there's another building down the street opening and maybe we want to move over there. Yeah. So, you know, so we rent. So we rent. I mean, um, I, I we thought about buying so houses. Much. Maybe. Sorry. 
I said, I hate moving so much. I, I couldn't imagine going from building to building. Like moving is such a nightmare. I, I agree with you because I've had these discussions with Todd. So I agree with you. And I came from a home. I had always lived in a house. I've always lived in a house. I've never lived in an apartment, like not even growing up. So for me, it was like a big adjustment that I had to do. You know, I liked my privacy. I was not used to any of that. So in the beginning, I was complaining all the time. Like, oh my God, I can't stand this, blah, blah, blah. And the neighbors and everyone, and everybody's in your face, but no. So now he calls me like the mayor of my building because like I'm friendly with everybody. I love everybody. I defend everybody. He's like, oh, I thought you didn't like living in a building. And I'm like the biggest one. Like, I love it. <laughs> and you know what? The truth is that my apartment is like a house. So, you know, it's two stories. It's 10,000 square feet. You know, we have our privacy. And, um, and I've gotten used to condo living. It's so easy because you like don't even have to close the door. And you just leave. You can travel. You don't have to worry about anything. It's, you know, safety wise, it's the best place that you could live. So I just, you know, I've, he brainwashed me. It's Todd's fault. He brainwashed me. I don't want to own a home. I don't want to own anything. I get it. How many bedrooms do you have? We have four bedrooms. We Three have bathrooms. four bedrooms. Um, no, like five bathrooms. Five bathrooms. Wait, I don't want to sound like Lisa when they asked her how many rooms she had and she didn't know. <laughs> um, if, so if you don't no, I have. have I'm just curious because I just know New York City rent. What is rent like for you? Like for a place like that, what does that go for around roughly? Like 30 plus. 30 plus a month. Okay. And that comes with yeah. all the amenities, like the pool and gym and stuff? Yeah. 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 Because I mean, we, we actually have a pool in our balcony, yeah. um, which you guys didn't get to see. Maybe next season, if we have another season, you'll get to see, which is kind of cool. And, um, yeah, the building comes with everything. You know, we have access to use, you know, all the amenities, the restaurant, the, the spa. We have, like, a beautiful spa. We have a gym, the pool, the beach. That's cool. But, you know, Wait, we Christian, also rented uh, before COVID. Remember, uh, after COVID, we have Matt, new prices here in Miami. You got in at a good time. Are yes. you up multiple floors? Because I'm, I'm asking because I see a car behind you. So I'm a little confused right now. Yes, I have four cars here. We have a four-car garage in our unit on the 52nd floor. What? <laughs> How? Is it yeah, it's an elevator? Sick. Yeah, we have, a car, we have an elevator in the building in the middle that's round. That's only for the cars and the passenger. I mean, we go up the elevator. So we have... The past, you know, we have just like the people elevator here and then the car elevator. So we what? go in through the garage and it brings us up to the 52nd floor. And then we get off and we come into our unit. Wow. That's so I have, the coolest yeah, thing I have I've ever heard two of. cars here. It is really cool. And I, it's one of the only buildings that has this. Um, yeah. So I have two cars here. And then on the other side, I have the other two cars. Oh, wow. My God. A four that car garage. Awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah, only in Miami. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you like the attention you're getting in Miami? Because obviously your life has changed ever since you went on the show. Do you? What do? You, what's your feelings about the attention? Are you enjoying it? Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Like, how do you? How do you feel about it? Yeah. Well, I mean, I want to say that I had a life before the show, and I did. I've always gotten attention. Obviously, with the show, it's like a different monster. It's like something sure. completely different. Bravo, man, um, he's insane. The what? The Bravo audience, you know. The, as as oh, you my God. Of, yes. It's, it's yeah, a, but you know what? Thanks to the Bravo audience, we're here because, you know, they're very vocal sure. and they're very loyal. And I and I love that about them. And, um, yeah. And, you know, I feel like I was saying I had attention. I've always had attention, but yeah. this is a different kind of attention. It's like sure. national level. It's like really like all over the world. I mean, I was in Dubai with Todd for one of my birthdays a few years ago and I was getting recognized there. And Todd was like, this is crazy. Like you haven't been on TV for all these years and you find somewhere, anywhere I go, like Mykonos and, you know, just like strange places like that, that you wouldn't think. And uh, well, Mykonos now is very popular. So there's a lot of people from, you know, local that have watched the show, but like in Dubai, who was ever going to think that? So the show does bring, you know, a lot of attention. There's a lot of people that watch and it's kind of like, I'm used to it, you know, in a good way. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love like when the fans come up to me and say, you're like, you're an inspiration. Like, I love watching you. You know, we're so happy with Frankie. How's Peter doing? You know, it's like you can you can feel it. Like, I love it. A lot of times I say that that's the best part about doing the show is all the wonderful people that I get to meet like throughout the world. Well, well actually, with 
with all these people that watch and for Bravo having such a devoted audience, do you feel like there's a lot of pressure on you to keep up, you know, your looks? Because like like the fa the fashion alone, I feel like people like when they're on these shows, they have to keep bringing fashion forward every single time. Is that is that tough? For me, it's not tough because I'm a fashion person. I love clothes. So with or without the show, I'm shopping. Like I dress like this for it. Sometimes they tell me like it's, a, it's casual, Alexia. And I'm like, well, yeah, but this is like who I am. This is how I dress. Like for me, it's like normal. And you can ask everybody. Like I've always been known like as that, you know, kind of person. So maybe for the other girls, they have to put a little bit more thought and more effort into it because that's not how like they live their daily life. But this is really like who I am and how I dress and I shop all year round and I travel all year round. And, you know, I've always been that person, you know, that's lived like that kind of lifestyle. How much so do you for think me, you have I to, don't put so, sorry. How much do you think you have to spend on fashion to keep up what you have going a on? Lot the, oh, a lot of money. Ask a Todd. Year. <laughs> Todd's like, oh. A lot. Yes. No, no. Yeah. Um, well, yes, his, his credit card, my you know? credit card. Yeah. But I feel too guilty. I'm like, okay, let me put it on mine. Um, a lot of money, but you know what? It's something that I love. So I don't see it like that. You know, I think it's just like part of like who I am and like of my life. And, you know, just like, you know, I always love to do my hair. Well, I have a beauty bar now, so it's a lot easier. So, you know, I, I've always done my nails. It's not like I only do a manicure when I'm going to be on TV. You know, I may wear more makeup because honestly, I don't like so much to wear makeup. So I take a break and when we're filming, you know, we have to do our makeup, but, um, but as far as everything else goes, nothing else changes because I do love to shop. I always like dress up just to go to dinner with Todd. Todd's like, okay, I told you casual and I'm like wearing a dress. So, you know, just like that kind of thing. It really like who you see on TV with me and like who I am in my daily life is the same thing. Like tonight I'm having dinner with Marisol and Steve and Todd and I, and we're going to the sexy fish. We have sexy fish here now in Miami too. Yeah. Uh, we just like have it all here. Um, you guys have to move over here. And, Seriously. um, yeah, I get it, but so that's what I'm saying. And like, even if I wasn't with you guys, I would still do my hair. I'll put on makeup. I would like, you know, dress up, you know, I feel that not only for the show, but Miami's like the kind of city, you know, that people like to look good and they take care of themselves and, you know, they dress up when we go out. So it's kind of like, it's part of our culture and part of like of our life here. So I have two follow-up questions to that. Number one, do people though, cause you're on TV, don't they want to dress you in their clothes? Don't you get given clothes because i feel like that's what happens when people get famous and on television like to me i feel like your budget for clothing should go way down because people are just want to throw clothes on you right well yes and no so it depends well first of all we just came back to tv you know we haven't been on tv like for a long time so you know i think after the season you know if we do have another season that i'm sure like a lot of designers are going to be you know handing you know clothes over you know also they're very a lot of designers are very careful with who they give you know, their clothing or their items to, because, you know, you want to make sure the person like represents you. So it's not like you get, and you know, sometimes you get things that you don't like, you know what I mean? I have like my own taste, like my, what, what I like, what I like to wear. So just because you give me something for free or like, to, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to wear it. You know, I'd rather pay for something that I know I like and that kind of like represents me than to wear something that's for free. So, you know, we'll get a lot of free stuff. If I like it, I'll wear it. If I don't, I don't. And even so, I still continue to shop, you know, like this top a designer gave it to me. It's really cute. So I'm wearing it. But um, but if not, like I won't wear it, you know, so sometimes it's just better like to pay for your own stuff, because if not, you're kind of like in the position that, you know, you have to wear it. And I've always been like a little picky, you know, about that. But, and then the other thing is like, if you want to wear designer, you know, I'm sure like Balenciaga is not going to be like, you know, sending me boxes, you know, and, you know, Bottega and Fendi and like all the brands that I like Versace, hopefully Versace, um, cause I adore Versace, but it's not that easy. Like you guys think that, that it's like that, but you know, it really isn't, you know, sometimes they do send you things, but it's like a sample size. It might not fit you, mm -hmm. but you know, moving forward, I hope they, they do send me more stuff. <laughs> My question for you is, do you, now that you've been on the show for a little bit, do you have Andy Cohen's cell phone now? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know that he gives it to us. I actually have it, but not because he gave it to me. At least I don't recall. <laughs> 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 yes. That's funny. So, but I do. 
do, is it like do you get to hang out with Andy after or is he out the door right away? Um, well, I thought it was really cute this time around when we were in Watch What Happens Live. Um, he came, you know, he always like comes into like your room, like while you're getting ready. And, you know, he says, hi, uh, when I was in Watch What Happened Live recently, he came in with Ben. That's so cute with his baby. And I thought it was so adorable, like how he's like with his son and he takes him, you know, he's already like in the, in, in this world. Right. I thought it was like so cool. And he was so cute. So he does that. But I mean, he has a job to do. He's like my boss. So it's not like he's trying to hang out. Like, do you hang out with your boss? Well, it, <laughs> do you have the time to watch all of these shows on Bravo? Because there is so many of these shows like who it's hard it's a job i know i agree he has like a tough job and we're not easy can you imagine like dealing with all of us like all the time and he has so many shows i mean it's like i'd rather like hang out with him here in miami it's not like i'm trying to hang out with him at the clubhouse or at the re after the reunion you know i think he wants to get the hell out of there you know sure. after like you know 10 hours of of us you know so but no, I would love to hang out with him here in Miami. I could take him to some cool spots here. You could. You could. Yeah. Alexa, so you mentioned uh, a beauty bar. What the hell is a beauty bar? Sorry, I have Ooh. no idea what that is. <laughs> so we have that here in Miami too. So it's a place where you can get beauty services all under the same roof. And um, I decided to open a beauty bar. Actually, in, I bought a nail salon like five years ago in the Surfside area, which is a beautiful area. It's like walking distance to like Ball Harbor. It's, you know, the beach area. It's really beautiful. I was a customer there and um, I needed something to do. So I bought the business. And while I was there, I was, Frankie was with me the whole time. So, and it was called something else. And it was only Alexia and Frankie. It was like every day it's like, oh my God, it's Alexia and Frankie. And I go, you know what? I'm going to change the name. I'm going to call it Alexia and Frankie's. And because I'm not sure whether I just want to do nails or I want to include other services that have to do with beauty, like spray tan, like I have my spray tan done there and lashes, like everything I like, massage, facial, lashes, blowouts, um, Is there booze eyebrows, there? Like a waxing, real bar? Uh, a real bar. No, well, you I, you know, on certain days, there's not like an actual bar. Um, but it's kind of like the name that they gave it to make it like a little sexier and to make it like a little funner. You know, I will, you know, serve, I, you know, I can't sell it, but as a compliment, uh, complimentary, you know, I'll serve like champagne or I'll serve wine or on a Friday we do like a little happy hour. But, um, but that's what it is. It's just like all these beauty services, like under like the same roof. Gotcha. Gotcha. Let me, so we do a little bit of a speed round and it's just, you know, the first thing that comes to your mind just trying to pick your brain real quick. Um, don't overthink it. Just have fun with it. You ready for it? Sure. All right. Let, I'll start it off, Dax. Uh, what is your favorite Real Housewives franchise besides your own? Beverly Hills. Good choice. I, I, I'm a fan of them. Mm -hmm. too. So if you were the president of Bravo and you had to cut one franchise except your own, who would you cut? Hmm. I wouldn't cut any of them. I think they oh, all add. You no. have to cut one. You're the president. Oh, I'm the president? Mm. Mm -hmm. I think they just cut Dallas, no? Would it all be right, Dallas or would it be one of the? Yeah. All right. Dallas okay. is out. Yes. Dallas is out. Okay. Um, have you ever done mushrooms? No. I like just microdosing? eat them. What do you mean? The, veggie, the vegetable. No, no, no. I've never done. It's like a <laughs> Okay. Oh, the psychedelic ones? No. I'm, I'm scared. I'm a chicken. I would never do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm already crazy as it is. I can't do any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's the one food everyone loves but you can't seem to get into? Oh. I don't know. I'm a foodie. I like everything. But... I like all the foods that kind of like that everybody loves. So, I mean, I, there's certain foods I don't like, like okay, what? certain like meats, like, you know, gamey animals and stuff. Like, I don't like that, but I don't know that other people like, like it. Like some something? people, people love venison. People, Todd loves that. People like rabbit. People like um, frog legs, you know, people like alligator, like all that kind of exotic meats and stuff. I don't like that. Okay. Um, do you still keep in touch with your high school prom date? No. <laughs> <laughs> How about did you go to your high school reunion? 
No, I haven't. I would love to because my senior year, I moved to Madrid, Spain. Mm. So my family moved over there. So I only had like three years in high school here, 9th, 10th, and 11th. But I would love for them to call me back. They probably will this year. Uh, of course they <laughs> will. Trust me. Yeah. They're going to want you there. Have no fear. Mm -hmm. uh, your celebrity net worth says you're worth about $3 million. Is that accurate? Is, is it higher or lower? Hmm. I think it's higher. Nice. Good for but you. But it really says that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it really they're notoriously... Says that. Where did you get that? They're notoriously wrong every time. Trust me. Mine yeah, I the know. other day said I was worth $100 million. So let's just be real. Yeah, I had read a little bit more too. That's why when you said $3 million, I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, you were awesome. Thank you so much for stopping by and chatting with us. I am so fascinated. I want to know so much more about your car elevator and your garage upstairs because I think it is so cool and nothing I've ever heard of before. Uh, but I know we can't keep you all day. So, oh, can we see your view? I want to see your view. You, you oh, yes. Us. Okay. Yes, I did. Wait, let me get this. Oh, man. Oh, oh my God. Dude, that is so sick. <laughs> that is worth over that. 30. That's 100%. That is insane. Holy. That is, I mean, come on. That is so sick. <laughs> wow. What a beautiful home and view. Yeah. When you guys are here, don't. If you, yeah, I should. Are have. you inviting us to dinner? <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can really. We see. will show up. <laughs> you see, in the car elevators. Are Sorry, this can be a really random see. question. Was that right. your building that we just saw over there? Like that we saw balconies. Oh well, that's the building that's right next to me. Was because... that the one that Kim and Kanye were going to live in for a while? Oh, no, that was a faena, but you know that Kanye wow. came to look at here also. We oh, have yeah? a lot of, like, yeah, Kanye had come here to look before they bought at the faena. Mm -hmm. Do you actually see neighbor, or I guess if you go down in your car, you're not going to see neighbors, but do you see neighbors in elevators going upstairs? Or are you, like, you're essentially living by yourself because you pull in and then you're into your oh, home. Oh yeah, that's what people love about this building, that feature, the fact that the privacy. So you don't have to go in through the lobby, you don't have to go in through valet. Mm. You know, you pull in to the building and you go straight through the garage so you see nobody. So there's a lot of like celebrities that live here, musicians, athletes that that own property in this building. So cool, so cool. So cool. Mm -hmm. um, can where can people find you on social media just in case they aren't already following you? Okay, so it's Alexia E underscore says. I don't judge me. I got that a long time ago. <laughs> Have you tried to upgrade that one? <laughs> no, well, I just put my last name now, Napola, Alexia Napola, but it's Alexia and then E because I was my other last name. Underscore says S A Y S. Gotcha. All right. And that's on IG. Is that the same across all your social media platforms? Yes. Yes, all it right. is. So that is where people can find you. And if you are in town, go to her beauty bar where you can get everything done, apparently, because I'm just learning about what the hell a beauty bar is today. Yes. So you Do to you guys get manicures and pedicures? Oh, I know. I've had them in the past, but it's not I, It's not a regular thing because my feet are so ticklish that uh, getting a <laughs> pedicure just sounds like a nightmare to me. <laughs> a lot of men feel like that, but a lot of men love it, too. No, it looks good when it's done, but I, the whole time I'm like, my feet tickle and it's, it's not it's not enjoyable because I'm so ticklish. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you again. Thank you, guys. It's been a lot of fun. So, Dax, thoughts? Thoughts? She was cool. I liked her. I, I, you know, I, I like people who are unapologetically rich. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because there's so many people that like, oh, I don't want to talk about my wealth. I don't want to talk about all this stuff. And it's refreshing. And I know we talk, I feel like I use this words like overuse it, but it is refreshing when someone just comes on and they're like, yeah, I'm wealthy as hell. And that's just my life. So that's what I can relate to. But and that's nice. Miami. That's what Miami is. It's like, you know, if I, you how many rich people do you know that like don't want to talk about it and don't want to acknowledge it and don't want to like put emphasis on it? And I'm like, you're rich. Like, that's it. Like, just acknowledge it. But she she acknowledged it without putting it in her face. She's like, oh, I have a garage that goes up to my, you know, a huge apartment or, you know, a condo. What do God, you that have? View. That view is insane. I mean, if, uh, I know if you're just listening to the audio, check out the video. I mean, she's just got a really cool. If you see the video. 
it's the apartment's pretty insane. And it, you were the one who saw the cars in the background. I was like, wait, what? What are you talking about? Then well, I, you know what it was? I just I assumed that she was on like a, a first floor, and so I thought, oh, maybe they just have really cool cars. So their garage, instead of just having a door to the garage, they have kind of like these windows to the garage. But then she kept re referring to like a building, a building, and then she said like our balcony has a pool, and I'm like, well, why do you have a balcony if you are on the bottom floor? Like it didn't make sense, and so I'm like. What is happening here? Why why do you have a balcony with a pool and cars directly behind you in your living room? Like I don't know what's happening. So, yes, if you guys if you guys want to see this, go go over to uh, our YouTube page Hollywood Raw and watch the video uh, because it's it's crazy and she shows us the view and you have to see the view off of her balcony. It's unbelievable. It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Um but if you guys like celebrity videos, you know, like we have the best paparazzi videos that you know, you just can't find anywhere else. This was stuff that you used to see back in the day, and nobody has this kind of content anymore. Um, check out our TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, um, a Hollywood Raw podcast. We got candid video, raw video that's quick up, quickly uploaded. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, if you love celebrity content, you'll love these videos. You get to see these celebrities in their natural environment, the streets. Um, <laughs> oh, I never changed our video back. Sorry, I was just bigger oh. than you. Just, just. Fucking one upping you over here. No worries. I got my fucking uh, Robert Pattinson phase going on right now. <laughs> I just shaved, so I'm good. Um, he's got a weird phase, doesn't he? Shout out to that. <laughs> um, so, um, guys, the best thing to do to support this podcast, like we always say, leave a review, five star only, say a few kind words. And if you would do that, we'll actually read a review live on air. Um, you could again follow us on all social media platforms. You can find me at, at Adam Glenn G L Y N. You can find Dax Holt at D A X H O L T. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. What's up, guys? If you like that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up, come on, let's go.